Hi guys, it's Jim Smith. Okay, today I'm reacting to this video. Jakarta vs Manila, which is better for travel in 2022, Indonesia or Philippines? Well, this is a difficult question. Well, for me, I've been to both cities, uh, Jakarta and Manila. Um, unfortunately, I don't recommend for the travel for both cities. I mean, you know, traffic there is super heavy and uh, not really safe. And there is nothing particular, nothing in particular to see. I mean, there isn't so sizing areas. Well, I'm sure you can have, you know, fantastic nightlife there, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I know both cities is, uh, you know, getting better. You know, uh, many skyscrapers or beautiful parks and big shopping malls are being made. So yeah, I guess things are getting better. So what this video is telling us about, let's get into it. If you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new here. So, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, let's talk about Jakarta and Manila, two capital cities of two huge island nations. First of all, to get it out of the way, I feel like both cities are underappreciated, they're definitely underloved. You hear people going to, yeah, Bangkok, oh yeah, and then you hear people, ah, don't go to Manila, just go straight to the beautiful islands of the Philippines, ah, Jakarta. Many people only know even Bali. When it comes to the perspective of traveling, maybe even living, staying for a few months, or maybe even longer in a city, I want to share a little bit my impression. You know, if I think of Philippines, I'm thinking... Yeah, what he said is true. Yeah, in Japan too. Um, if you go to the Philippines or Indonesia, uh, go, just go to some beautiful island like um, Cebu or Lapu Lapu or you know, Boracay or in Indonesia, Bali. Don't go to the capital because it's not really safe or it's not really beautiful. Yeah, that's the way it is. But so what he's showing us about uh, those cities, interesting. Amazing blue beaches. I'm thinking Indonesia with its volcanoes, the tropical islands, but yet wow. both of the capital cities, Manila and Jakarta. You don't hear too much about it from, let's say, a traveler's perspective. Not too many people talk about how much they want to go there. And in contrast to, let's say, cities like Bangkok that are fairly high on people's list, I feel like in some ways they might be underrated. Not too many people visit them and today I want to put them next to each other and share with you the pros and cons, the differences of the two cities and whether or not I think you should visit one of them. Oh, interesting topic. And before we get into it, if you're new here, my name is Dan and for the past five years I have been on the road, sometimes changing countries every one week or two, but in the past few years staying even more so for three months, four months, at least a month in every country to get a bit of a feeling for it before moving on and talking about this lifestyle of remote living. So if that is something you're into, next to just travel content, I document my life, going to cool places. So first of all, Jakarta, it's a humongous city, population is a bit over 10 million people. Wow. Manila itself, you That's have to lot. understand. And there's Metro Manila, which is kind of like the area of Manila, like the area of Jakarta. There is places like areas like Makati, areas like BGC, which are really modern, really nice. Same as with Jakarta. The cities are very similar from the aspect that they're very large. They're not really walkable. They're definitely, it's also hard to get from one area to another. Traffic True. is probably horrible yes. in both places. For That's me, it would be hard to compare where it is worse because I've been in Jakarta during COVID times. It was very quiet, but now it's still busy. Manila was an absolute nightmare. It was almost impossible to like drive 10 kilometers without yeah. it taking no, hours. Impossible. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you're like, if you're gonna stay in one area, like I'm gonna give some my personal recommendations, then you don't really need to drive around, and it doesn't become that big of an issue. Maybe like once every few weeks, or however, when you go to the airport, it might be. But other than that, it's not a huge issue. But uh, you know the thing when you hear about both cities, the first thing you mostly hear from travelers, maybe even locals. They're just like, ah, forget wow. about uh, Manila. Just head straight away to Palawan, like beautiful islands, beautiful beaches. Maybe I'm gonna show you some things yeah, like right now. And you know, I don't wanna sugarcoat none of the two cities. It's true, it's true. There's definitely some poverty in both cities or maybe even a good amount of that still. Jakarta is actually being known for the city that is sinking or let's say it's mm. the clickbait that is often people like to use to just, you know, always get a little bit more clickbait just like we do on this video. Um, I know I when I went to Jakarta 
that was rainy season and almost the city was sinking. <laughs> I was really hard to go to the airport. Just that's what I remember when I went to Jakarta. That was kind of nightmare. And the truth is, is that the water levels are rising closer to the shores. Let's talk about the positive side. Let's talk about the interesting side of things to do, a little bit the history, a little bit the culture. And that's where the two cities really, really differ. Mm. So they're similar from the outlet that there are some areas that are a little bit older, some areas uh, a little bit nicer, others more poor. And then you have these like super business districts, both in Manila as well as in Jakarta. They yeah. have a little bit maybe of a New York vibe, a little bit also really? of a Bangkok, Bangkok vibe, huge sky rises. I'm gonna show you some drone shots right now from Jakarta. You can check out the other videos I filmed around wow. it. Is this Jakarta? I can't believe it's so developing or maybe developed already. The view looks like that of Singapore. Wow, I didn't see that coming. And for Manila goes the same. So my recommendation for Manila, let's first talk about like the business district, the nice areas to stay in, where it's super modern. And if you like big city vibes, if you like to go to a rooftop bar, everyone's crazy about the Bangkok rooftop bars. Well, let me tell you one thing. <laughs> because Manila has amazing rooftop that, bars maybe. and so does Jakarta. And um, the areas in Jakarta, the two areas, one is called Kuningan or Mega Kuningan. It's an area with embassies, with a lot of office buildings and residential buildings alike. So really comfortable to stay. You can stay in a building with oh, a super beautiful. nice gym. You can go out, you can go for walks. There's areas that are developed, not just one or two streets where it's, let's say, like nice, but it's actually it's an actual neighborhood where you can go for an hour walk and it just feels super futuristic and super modern. And when I arrived in Jakarta, like with any big city, I, I knew there's gonna be a nice area, but in Jakarta, I've actually been a little bit blown away. Similar as the Philippines, but here maybe even a little bit more, they have like this brand new SCBD area that I'm mm. staying in right now. And wow. so with that, like you're definitely gonna have some nice places to stay, be it for a few days or for a few weeks, check out some rooftop bars, just get a little bit the city vibes, the exhilarating. I just did actually a poll on my story. It's kind of like, great. I like to be a little bit stuck in between, I'm not stuck, I like to bounce around in between this big city vibe, which wow. is exhilarating, which wakes you up. You see people are on the go, a little bit this like New York mentality, but it also can burn you out easily. And I feel like, or at least, you know, I like to listen to podcasts. I like to consume information around the fact of, you know, in terms of like mental well being, we're just not made to sit in huge skyscrapers all year long and just stare at walls. And there, the thing is with both Jakarta and Manila, that's what they have in common. Even though they have huge skyscrapers and sky rises, yes. the cities are still fairly uh, green in terms of the What's business the districts, difference? Um, BGC in Manila and here SCBD in Jakarta. Both of them still have like a lot of trees, a lot of things are developed nicely in comparison maybe to a Dubai that right now tries to also mm. have more greenery, which is obviously harder, you know, it's a desert. But um, yeah, those are probably the two areas. In Manila, it's gonna be the BGC area. There are just um, the little trip, the day trip there. Really nice, big buildings, big mall complexes. Again, speaking about malls, both Jakarta and Manila are known for having humongous malls. Like you can get lost yes. there. Some of them are a little bit older. Some of them are really new. And have I, I love Greenbelt in Manila. It's so um, convenient and you can have fun there. The mall so beautiful. There are lots of good foods and you can buy, you can get anything there. It's really convenient. Everything you might want, every single brand you might think yeah. of, maybe with some exceptions, but not really. Definitely all the big chains you're gonna find both in Jakarta and Manila. So from the perspective of being a modern city, they have a lot of things in common. They have really nice areas while they struggle with some infrastructure issues, which I would yeah. say both cities are working on. Talking about public transportation mm. and things like that, Jakarta is probably still a little bit better. They have a oh, really? T line. Oh. MRT line, yeah, I've never taken this um, train, but oh, actually, you can you can use it. That's a big difference because public transportation in Manila isn't really good. I think that to to tourists cannot use the one because it's not really safe and uh, it's co it's so super crowded, so it's uncomfortable. Where I think Philippines has also one. I tried it once. Was not as good as here. This one's wow. actually comparable to maybe, but they still both have a line actually. 
In terms of buses and things like that, Jakarta is actually fairly well. Jakarta, uh, like buses are running absolutely everywhere. In the Philippines, they still have the old jeepneys for the yeah, most part. Yeah, they yeah. also have some buses, but like a jeepney, I don't know if I have a shot of it. It's basically like old American military cars. <laughs> and with that, I think we're also going to make a transition a little bit into the history of both countries. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, which make the right? experience very different. Guys, honestly, taxis here as well as in Manila. I think in Jakarta a little bit cheaper than I, I can remember. Like mm. you can go is from it? one side to the other side of the city for that's five dollars for like a forty-minute drive. You just need to go around the neighborhood. Twenty minutes is going to be like two dollars for a taxi ride. Wow, cheap. Maybe three dollars in Manila, but pretty much around. To, like very easy to get around. You have all the apps, uh, Grab, and um, the, in Jakarta it's Gojek. So to talk about the culture, it makes the experience really different. No. Oh, so both countries have colonial history. Yes. In um, Indonesia, Japan, it's right? The Dutch that happened here for a few hundred years and really influenced the culture, mm -hmm. and you still see it on the ground. So you can go into the old town of um, Jakarta and you can see the city hall. I think it's like if it around the 300-year-old building from the Dutch that they set it up, and it looks really interesting. It adds a vibe to this modern uh, city in some neighborhoods, and then in other neighborhoods, like let's say Chinatown, is still. Uh, I uploaded a video recently, it's still very like, you know, it's a little bit like time traveling like 30, 40 years back with all the markets. And in the Philippines, you have the colonial history of the Spanish being there that really influenced the culture. And there you have the um, Intramuros, old town in Manila, which I actually really, really liked. It was like, for example, here the old town is not that large. In the Philippines, the old town is fairly big. You have these like you have wall wow. structures, there's like some war memorials. Oh. And overall, just to walk around through that area, you see... Wow, it doesn't look like Philippines. It looks like a totally Spain or some Europe country. Yeah, visiting there and you can get historical feeling. That's good. That's a good thing for the traveling. Really, really old Christian cathedrals in um, wow. the Philippines. A lot of them, especially in Manila. And some of them are actually look really, really nice, really cool. Um, in, here in Jakarta, you also have some churches. Mm. Much, much less definitely oh. than in the Philippines, naturally, because Indonesia is, I think, it is actually the largest Muslim country mm -hmm. in the world, yet with some exceptions, like the island of Bali is actually, yes. that makes also the culture in Bali very different. But to get back to that, in terms of that, if you're coming from the outside, if you have never been to Indonesia, it definitely feels different than, let's say, a Middle Eastern country here. Mm -hmm. um, you have the mosques, you have the mosques, uh, prayers every few hours. In the Philippines, something worth mentioning. Everybody speaks English. That's also due to the recent history, fairly recent history of the American being for some time mm. in the Philippines. And they also really affected the culture. The Philippines are extremely Western oriented when it comes to culture. You can get around with English super, super easily in the yes. Philippines. Most people like speak it literally fluently and even their own language, they kind of like mix it all the time. And in Jakarta, a lot of people are going to speak English as well. I don't know, maybe around mm. half, I would uh, say, I don't really in the think business so. district a little bit more, outside of the business district a little bit less. Yes, so here, exactly. if you're going to leave Jakarta, honestly, I'm going to tell you there is some communication issues every once in a while. Maybe not necessarily issues, because you always have your hands, you have your eyes, and oh you have your a little house. translator on the phone. Oh my god, his house is so good. <laughs> I think normally people cannot stay in such a fantastic place. So I don't take this scenery for, uh, you know, comparison. In Indonesia, I've been using it quite, quite a lot. Talking about the cost of traveling, also very, very similar, both with accommodation, taxis, as mentioned, food, wow. things like that, restaurant. Wow. Alrighty, guys. And so on that note, I hope you got a bit of a feeling for both cities, Manila, and Jakarta. I feel like they're both underrated in the sense that not that many people go there. And while I do think both of the cities have problems, while personally I, I probably wouldn't particularly choose them to stay like for weeks or months on end, I think both of them have a certain charm. Both of them definitely have areas that I would maybe avoid. And I'll be curious to hear, have you been to any of the two cities? How did you like them or maybe not like them? And while personally probably I prefer a city like Bangkok maybe to live there also a little bit longer, uh, I, th I think both of them are really worth visiting, at least for a few days, to get a bit of a feeling. If you like the big city vibe, I think with every country you visit, if you visit Indonesia, it's kind of cool to see, you know, the capital of the city. If you visit Philippines, I think it can also be really interesting, the old town. I see. So, um, in a nutshell, uh, Jakarta is more convenient, while um, Manila is more like historical place. Yeah, I totally agree. 
I know there are lots of historical places in Manila, but I don't go there because I usually go there for business. And on top of that, it's really hot, super hot, and traffic is so heavy. That's a problem. Yeah, but like he said, uh, if you stay at a hotel which is uh, located near the sightseeing area, uh, like within walking distance, gonna be good traveling. While, uh, whereas Jakarta, I went there uh, seven years ago the la for the last time, I didn't know that public transportation has been so improved now. Um, I mean, it was so bad seven years ago, um, you know, dirty, super crowded and dangerous. So I thought I couldn't take public transportation in Indonesia, in Jakarta. Things got much better. It's fantastic for traveling. Well, from this video, I'm pretty sure that you know both cities uh, improving much better. Like uh, gonna be like uh, Tokyo in the future, Tokyo or New York in the future. But unless they improve the transportation system, we're not gonna be good traveling area because you know uh, you have to move a lot for traveling, right? Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you like it. If you do, make sure to like, watch, and subscribe, please. So, Madao.